I'm Sean Chuma. I'm a professional base jumper and instructor from ID Base. I've got nearly 4,000 base jumps and I'm here today to show you how to pack a parachute for base jumping. Packing a parachute is a huge part of base jumping. We want our parachute to open on heading, so we're trying to pack with precision. You don't want to just be sloppy and throw it in there. You want to actually take your time, especially in the beginning when you're learning how to pack, and make everything very symmetrical. Symmetry is the key for a nice pack job. I hope this video helps you. You can pause it and rewind it at any time. So here it goes. It makes it a lot easier to pack if you stake your rig down or put some weight on it. I've got this badass stake that I'm gonna put in there to hold it there. I like to put it through the uh, three rings, through the big ring, um, through both of them. Basically, you just wanna find some spot in the rig, um, whether it's the hip ring or the leg straps, some spot so that uh, both sides are symmetrical. One of the first things we want to do is run the lines up to make sure that the steering lines aren't around the rest of the lines. I like to give it a little shake and then drop the front riser lines, then the rear riser lines, and then make sure that my steering lines from one side to the other so I can I just want to be able to see the tail from one side to the other and make sure that it's clear and not wrapped around any of the other lines. Next we want to set the brakes. For slider down jumps we usually put the brakes in the deep setting. There's usually two different settings on the steering line. We're going to make it so the tail is pulled down farther so that we have less forward movement when the parachute opens. So what we do to set these is run across from the, the steering line from the outside to the inside. Then we put this loop through the line, through the deep brake setting. Then through the ring. And then the toggle locks it off. So it goes line ring toggle, LRT. And you have to remember that because if you don't do it right, then the brake can fire on opening and then all of a sudden you're flying with no brakes. Now the excess should be on the inside. And with these risers, I actually have a Velcro keeper to keep it real nice. Sometimes it'll go around the back and just go through a stretchy piece of elastic right there. So we want to make sure that we put the toggle in the keeper and then pull the brake line tight and that's going to help make your brake setting last a lot longer. I pick up the risers and I keep the front riser lines separate from the rear riser lines and also the steering lines separate from all that. I run them up, shake it and then I join them together. After I join them together, I lift up the steering lines, make sure they're clear from the other lines. Then I lift up the rear riser lines and make sure those are clear. And then I can put it over my shoulder. Then I count the cells. There should be seven of them in most base canopies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I get them nice and straight, and then I like to separate the A's from the rest of the lines, and then I whip it. Put it between my legs, and start flaking. And I've already got the A's separated from everything else, so I can just reach in and start flaking to either side. So I want to find the center cell, which on mine is the blue one, and basically make this nice and neat and put all these other ones to the side so it should look like that then I move to the next fold up and reach through and separate between the B's and the C's and do the same thing now sometimes it's gonna look like that and all you got to do is count one two three and I like to reach down there with both hands, that way I can make it more symmetrical. After that I go to the third fold and reach down in there between the C's and the D's. 
and find that center cell and flick everything else to the side. Now I keep following the outside of the canopy. So here's the stabilizer. Then I've got the tail folds. I want to clear all those. Then I follow around the tail. There's the tail pocket. Continue around to flake out these tail folds and then clear the stabilizer on that side. Next thing I want to do is grab this tail and grab all my steering lines that are connected to the tail and I grab all that with one hand. Then I grab all these D lines. There should be eight of them. And I just pull the tail tight while I'm pulling the D lines down. Just pull it up there and then I can flake out between the D lines and the tail line. And I grab all these D lines and put them in my right hand and I move my right hand above the fabric and just work my way back towards the front of the canopy just touching it up and pulling the lines together. So now I'm going to grab the C lines put those all on the same hand grab above the fabric touch it up here grab the B lines put them all in one hand reach above the fabric touch it up and then now I've, what I've done is pulled all the lines together and just touched everything up. I want to make sure that I've got one, two, three folds here, then my tail folds. The, the stabilizer should be just straight down from, it should, all the lines in the stabilizer should be straight down. The stabilizer basically, you don't want it way out here. You want all the lines in the center and the fabric on the outside. Now I want to pull the tail pocket up over everything and I, now I want to dress up the nose. So the nose, what I do is I put it all to one side. First thing I want to do is make a crease on either side. This works good for some canopies but others that have um, a really hooked over nose uh, doesn't work so well. So I'm going to show you how to do this. If the canopy is, uh, if the nose really hooks over, then you can just leave it right in the middle when you pack it. But if it doesn't, then you put the crease on either side so it can hinge back and forth, and then just basically put that nose over to the side. Not way over here, but just right there. And then you can put your left hand way up uh, on the canopy here and lift it way high, and then I'm just going to flip it out and then lower my hips to set it down. I want to be careful not to let it spill off of my hand. And then I want to flip my hand out away from me to unfold any fabric that was folded under. Next thing I want to do is put a clamp around the lines. First thing I want to do after I get this canopy on the ground is find the center cell tab right here that's on, close to the tail and I want to pull that up so that the tail comes up a little bit. Then I go straight to the nose by grabbing all these folds and folding them over right down the center. And I want to make sure that these A lines are straight rather than way out here. If they're way out to the side, I just want to kind of pull the nose in a little bit. So then I want to get the nose even. So I count one, two, three, and then I roll these back about four or five times. It just needs to be symmetrical on both sides. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I leave the center cell out and grab the other three on the bottom and roll those back the same. So one, two, three, four, five. So those rolls I want to grab with my fingers here and then I want to hook my thumbs in the nose and just fold everything back into the center cell so it actually stays there. I want to make sure that this little piece here is still there. Sometimes people will accidentally put it 
like that and that's not quite right it needs to be right in the center and then I roll it back a little bit more and I put my knee on it while I have some tension on it and I come down here and roll that out a little bit more I want to put this underneath everything face down right in line with the lines after I do the nose I want to address this top fold or actually it's the bottom fold after I do the nose I want to address the the bottom fold there's gonna be three on top of a stack so I want to start counting my tabs so it's one two three it's not the right one one two three those are the tabs that connect uh, to the A's and I kind of lift up and I want to chop this stuff outwards on the inside and then I'll make this first fold I'm really trying to keep that nose right in the center so then I put my knee on the tabs Flatten that out. Then I want to move to the next fold. One, two, three. Lift up. Put a little bit of that center cell towards the inside of the fold. And I can go like this. And I always want to pull towards me to get the air out so that I make the lines tense. Two, three. This is the third fold. So these tabs are going to overlap because the canopy is trimmed, you know, steeper. So the tail, the, the ones at the top will overlap the ones towards the bottom. Now I move on to the stabilizer and I want this seam on the stabilizer to go right down in line with the lines. So think about it, most of the seams are actually going to be in line with the lines and the rest of the fabric kind of stays on the outside. So I get that there. And then I just go ahead and fold that stabilizer over. And then I go ahead and start making the tail folds. They're kind of like pages in a book. Uh, they, all, they should all be the same size. Some canopies have four line attachments and some have five. If there's not a line on the tail fold, on the tail like this one you just act like there is and you put it the seam in the center until you get all the way to the tail pocket I've got this side all flaked on the outside so now I need to move to the other side and what I do is get these lines in the middle I put my hand right in the middle now and flip everything over so I can start with this bottom fold just like I did on the other side. I count my tabs again, one, two, three. Chopping this out. I'm being careful not to move the pack job around because I want to keep that center cell right in the middle. Put my knee on it. One, two, three. Chop it out. Flip it. Get the air out. Move to the next one. One, two, three. Moving on to the stabilizer. And the tail folds, just making them about the same. A lot of people worry about how this doesn't look so neat. Uh, it's okay, they actually have to curve, so you can't really make them super beautiful. Remember these ones that don't have the line attached to the tail, you just act like it is and make another fold. Until you get to that tail pocket. So now I've got both sides flaked on the outside 
and I'm going to need to move to the inside to flick the inside of the canopy. I can look inside the canopy and expose everything to my eyes by just pulling the tail pocket back a little bit. And then I'm going to reach down in here. I grab all the D lines on this side and I lift them up and chop them out. Try not to pull too much fabric from this side over to my side. I just want to make it look real nice like that. Then I'm going to grab all my C lines and run my hand right up that, that seam right there. And always pulling away from the container. Then I put them all in that hand, lift up, make, them, make it look nice in there. Grab all the B lines, run my hand up that seam, put that in that same hand, chop it out, and then I make a channel right up there by the nose and I put all the lines right in the center and then I make the channel by just putting my fingers down on the ground and running straight up where the nose is and I put my all those lines that I have in my right hand up to the uh, middle and I'm gonna move to the other side and do the same thing you can either move to the other side or you can do it from the side you're already on so lift up the D's, chop that out real nice, run my hand up, put that all in one hand. Get those B's, chop it out, channel and put everything right in the middle. Now I'm gonna move down here. Since I flaked out the inside, what it did was pull the, it pulled the, the tabs outwards. So I wanna go back up here and straighten all this stuff up out here and actually get more line tension. When you're flaking out the inside of the canopy, there's a three-step process. There's the lift and chop thing here, and then the line tension, and then there'll be one more after that where we do a line pinch. So this is step two. And what I'm gonna do is grab all the tabs across the top. There should be seven of them. And I'm gonna put them all in one hand and lift up. And then I want to evenly distribute the center cell on either side so that the center seam is going straight down the middle of the canopy. Then I move down to the next set of tabs. I can follow the center seam down to the next center tab, grab all the ones next to it, put those all in one hand. I still keep them separated though. Lift and then distribute the center cell. This is where the bridle attachment is. You wanna make sure that bridle attachment is just laying down right in there and symmetrical on either side. Because when your canopy pulls out of there, you want this thing to be straight so it doesn't twist. I move that out of the way, grab the next tab down and the ones next to it, put that all in a different, between two different fingers lift distribute the center cell and then I grab the nose that stuff that I have rolled up I just pinch it all together and just tug on it a little bit so that I can straighten the a-lines I don't want to pull too hard but I want to get those a-lines tight and I want to make sure that 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 roll that nose roll is right in the center so I let go of that and then I pull a little bit and let go of that lowest set of tabs and then I pull a little bit more, let go of the next one, and then pull a little more. And what it does is it tightens up all these lines so I have good line tension. Step three of that process of doing the inside of the canopy is the line pinch. So the first one was lift and chop. Then we did the center cell distribution and the, and the line tension by grabbing the tabs and pulling and lifting them around and all that. And now I'm going in and pinching all the lines together. So I grab all the D lines, pinch them together. I'm going to find all the C lines. There should be eight of them. Grab those. I lift up the D lines and pinch the C lines underneath. And then I keep uh, tension on the D line hand because that keeps everything else tight. Then I reach down here and I can pinch the A's and B's together just by grabbing here. I don't really like digging around in here because it just messes things up more. So. I squeeze that together. If I mess anything up, I fix it. 
These little things that look like condoms should be folded outwards. Just like this. If it was like this, if it was under your stuff, under your lines, you'd want to fix that so they're like that. So while I've still got tension on those D lines, I bring all my steering lines back to the middle in between the stabilizer. Stabilizer looks kind of like a collar. We want it to be in between the collar. And my next step will be the tailgate. So for the tailgate, you can use tape, which is what I use sometimes. This is, it's just masking tape. And you want to be able to wrap it around maybe two to three times max around, around the lines. Otherwise, you can use a tailgate with a rubber band. I'm going to take my clamp off and then go down to the container and I want to grab all my tailgate lines which are the steering lines and then the inside lines on the rear risers the inside lines now the inside C's and D's are the inside rear riser line they cascade into the C's and D's so I grab all these sometimes they're color coded on canopies sometimes they're not but you would grab here and then the inside line on the rear risers. You want to make sure you keep a finger in between and run the lines up. And, uh, and then run them up from there. Hey, what are you doing? You making a packing video? Oh, hey, Jesse, ho. That's my deal. No, this is my video. Uh, this is a new packing video in town? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Well, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> make sure you stay real low so you're not pulling any uh, slack out of the lines. So the reason why I had my finger in between is because I want to make sure that I didn't cross my steering lines. If you cross your toggles, um, you end up pulling right and turning left and it can be a big problem. So we just want to make sure we do a check for that while we're packing. So now I grab my piece of tape. So I like to put the tape just below the bar tacks right here. And it should go around one, two, two to three times. That's about two and a half. Then I put my clamp back on the lines. Since I pulled the tail pocket back, I want to make sure that I straighten all this stuff up, the tail folds. You're just putting them right back where they were. Now I want to pull the tail pocket down, but in order to do that, I need to grab the second seam down, grab those together in one hand, hold the lines down, and then pull down a little bit, let go of those seams, and then pull the tail pocket down flush with the base of the canopy. Then I'll put my knees on it. These tail folds are actually going to fold under like I'm cocooning the top of the canopy. I'm going to grab the tail folds and they're just going to do a half fold under. So it's the tail folds and the stabilizer. They just go about half, half a fold under and then I just walk that up like that. And then I can lay on it to push the air out. The next thing I'm going to do is figure eight the lines. So I'm going to pull my stake out or take the weight off, whatever you have going on. Now I'm going to have a seat on my canopy with my tail pocket in between my legs so I can figure eight the lines. I can take this clamp off because I don't need it anymore. Undo the Velcro real nicely so that your Velcro lasts a long time. If this Velcro is busting open, after you get down from your from your jump, you might not be mating it together very well or you might need new Velcro. So you take that off, open up your tail pocket. There should be a rubber band right here. That's for your primary stow. Some people don't use this, I do. There's a primary stow and a pocket. So the first, the primary stow, you just grab all the lines together and you pull straight back, 
try not to put any weird slack in the lines. Then you just match it together without twisting that primary stove. And you're gonna put the rubber band around it twice. It should be about that big. That's maybe two inches. You're gonna wrap the rubber band around twice. And stick that primary stove in the pocket. Now you're ready to figure out the lines. I grab the lines and I pull straight back. And then I grab down a little bit farther with my other hand, pull a little bit, and then dump the lines over to the right side. I like to push this down to help get it out of the way. So this hand, I want to pull to the back of the tail pocket, just right where the seam is, where it opens. And I want to leave this hand here until I get the other hand to where it's supposed to go. Like that. I'm going to leave this hand here until I get this hand to here. It just helps hold the lines down. And what I want to do is make the each figure eight smaller than the previous one, just a little bit smaller. You just don't want them to be bigger. So I'm not twisting my hand, I'm just grabbing and I'm pulling straight back. And I'm making sure that I'm not shifting my hands around. I'm just grabbing where I need to and pulling. It's getting a little bit smaller. Until I get just to the bumpers. And I can close the tail pocket. And this Velcro is not supposed to bust open when you jump, so... Make sure you made it down really well. Make sure there's no lines in between the Velcro. Now I can lay back on the canopy and just chill. I just squished the air out, so I'm going to roll off to the side. I always roll off to my left side and start my reduction folds from there. And what I'm going to do is grab all these folds, I put my hand right in the middle, and fold right along the, tail, the edge of the tail pocket. So this is an asymmetrical way of doing the reduction folds. It works for some people and some other people have you know, off-heading openings with it. If you have off-heading openings with it, I'll show you a different way right after this. So it's right to the edge of the tail pocket. I put my knees on it. I grab the other side. Pull it right over top of the other ones. And I want to put a clamp right there so that the clamp actually contains this side. I'm going to put a clamp right across from it. And then one more right at the top. So everything's held together. Now, if you have a problem where you keep getting off-heading openings, you know, hopefully you're trying out this new pack job at the bridge. If you keep getting off-heading openings, then I suggest you try rolling off to the right side and then starting that side first. So this side would be the bottom and then this would go over top of it. And if that still is giving you issues, then what you can do is this. This is the more symmetrical way of doing it. You make a 45 degree fold right here, and instead of folding it all the way over at the edge, you just fold it halfway to there, and then halfway again. And then put a clamp on either side. Then you'll move to the other side and do the same thing. So that's the symmetrical way of doing the reduction folds.
So just before I put the canopy in the container, I wanna check and make sure my brakes are stowed properly. So I've got line ring toggle, and then I've got the toggle through the keeper and it's Velcroed on. Line ring toggle, toggles through the keeper. Excess is stowed and on the inside. And then I like to put my foot on the risers and straighten up the container so that I can just fold it right over top of there. I'm gonna grab this big knot of lines right here so that nothing comes out of the tail pocket. And then I lift up and I can pull the container towards me or pull the canopy into the container. Doesn't really matter as long as you just keep that tension on the risers. You lay the risers right down in there. Toggles kind of like to fold to the outside a little bit. And then I just put my feet right here and pull the canopy right down to the bottom seam. It varies with each container. Sometimes you need to put it a little farther down. Next thing I want to do is make 45 degree rolls right here. And what that does is keep the air from rushing up into here and inflating from these folds. Now I'm gonna make my first fold, put my hand right about where the top seam is on most canopies or most containers. I put my hand right about where the top seam is inside the container and I just fold that back. Press it down a little bit. So if I fold this right, if I keep this nose right in the center the whole time, then it'll look nice like this and be right in the middle. Sometimes it'll be off to the side, so you might have to straighten it up. But it just goes right down the middle there. I like to open up this bottom skin right here on that center cell so that the air rushes right in there. Make sure my risers are flat. If you need to look at your risers or fix them up, you can always go like this. Then I want to make that last fold right at the bottom of the container and make sure that my bridle attachment is right in the center. Now I like to take this clamp off right now and kind of settle this stuff down. And I put my knee on it and take the other clamps off and then get my bridle ready. You should look at the directions for your container because each one is different as far as the closing uh, method. But for mine, it closes this right side first. So I am going to have the pins up and then I pull it to the side. And I like to close the top first. So I pull this top flap up. And put the pull up cord in there. Push my corners down. And go through the whichever side is first on your rig. And then put it through the other before you pull in because you're trying to keep everything right in the center. So I had my pin up and then I folded it to the side so the pin's down. So when I bring the pin over, I do it with a frowny face right through there and pull the pull-up cord out and my rig is made so that the pins go across like that now I can do the bottom pin so put the pull-up cord through the closing loop do my left side first I can push this bottom flap up while I pull on that. Put the pin in from left to right on mine. What we're looking for on the pins is that the tab of the pin, the tab on the bridle is connected to the inside of the curve of the pin. Because what that does is it lifts the pin up and pulls it right out. Should be right there. 
if the tab, if the pins go in the opposite direction, then the bridle has to pull on the outside of the pin. It actually has to pry to get that pin out of there. So the bridle determines which way the pin goes on most rigs. Some rigs it has to go a certain way. On mine it for sure goes this way. So now I've got this Velcro. I like to fold this outwards so it kind of makes a figure four. And then I have my excess in between the pins as well. And then I can close over top of it. And straighten up my dynamic corners. And it's packed. To fold the pilot chute, I just run my hand down the bridle and get all the twists out. Then to tuck the bridle in, I just bring the, the bridle straight down and then diagonal down the right side. I put a fold right here, kind of towards the bottom, just over the BOC. And then I fold that right under there because I want to keep the bridle nice and flat. I don't want too many twists in the bridle and I definitely don't want anything where the bridle is actually folded like that. Because if it's up in there, you see how you've got this tape right here, it's got an edge on it. So if it's in there folded long ways, it can actually open up kind of like a grappling hook like that and, and possibly snag. So we want to have everything real nice in there. And then I put another fold just before so it goes around the corner into the BOC. And I go up here. And I run my hand up to the ZP. And then this pilot shoots a little bit longer because it's a snatch. Usually you would just put the knot about right there. But since this is longer, I put it a little bit higher. And then I start S folding, leaving some room down here and putting the bridle way up here by the ZP. I leave enough room so that I can put the pilot chute in there. It's better to be able to, it's better to have to pull some out than to put some more bridle in the pilot chute. And then I wrap the mesh around the bridle and I grab everything up here. And then I pull the pilot chute and the cap around everything that I had my right hand in and transfer my hand. Push all the air out. Careful not to lose your grip of the stuff up here because this is your handle, so you want to keep all this stuff nice and firm. Then I like to fold a little bit of the ZP over the bottom there and grab my bridle with my finger. And I tilt my rig upright. And just put that pilot chute right in there. Sometimes you gotta fix your bridle a little bit. Make sure there's not too many kinks in it right there. And it should look something like that. If you have questions or would like to contact me about base jump training, you can look up seanchuma.com.